Seed season has come early this year. A month ago, I took a hoe, had this entire area clean, and now they've come back with a vengeance. But not only on this side, but this side too. And you might be thinking, well, why do you need to deal with that side of the fence? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. I'd like to uh, kind of point out John the Baptist. John the Baptist was called to be the forerunner of Jesus, and so he had a lane. But uh, what you find is that he took opportunity to share the gospel and the truth and to uphold the moral banner. He says in Mark 6, 18, where it says, For John had said unto Herod, For it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. And so here's John the Baptist standing toe to toe with Herod, exposing Herod's sin. He's pointing out what's going on on that side of the fence, knowing that if that's not taken care of, it will creep in, just like uh, we've had in times past, just like the goat heads or the puncture vines have crept in. Now, you might find that this bothers you a little bit. You might feel comfortable considering your relationship with the Lord a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You might really enjoy your personal devotionals. You might like your small group Bible studies. You might really prefer a church that is, um, is very predictable and very safe. And you may not realize that you have become a pietist. And you might think, well, why am I a pietist? Well, I find it interesting how things evolve and we find ourselves with certain viewpoints that kind of are shaped by these microcultures that we're not even really aware of. Piety was really proclaimed during the Reformation. And as Baptists, we see ourselves as, uh, you know, preceding that and so um, but during the Reformation piety was was really upheld and there was a promotion of, of, of people being saved as opposed to relying on salvation uh, in a church or through a church there was uh, this opportunity now to have a Bible because of the Gutenberg press and so you could read the Bible, and so small groups were formed, and they had Bible studies. People started doing devotions. This was all great. Then it began to take this monastic turn to where people turned inward, and the religious leaders really liked this because it kept religion out of what the ruling class was trying to do. Now, how did that really manifest itself uh, here in this country. Well, in 1955, uh, LBJ uh, promoted the idea that you cannot, from the pulpit, you cannot promote a certain um, individual that's running for an office. Otherwise, you would lose your tax status. Well, next they begin to chip away prayer in school. And next, Roe versus Wade, and you just see how this whole thing unfolds. When we don't take care of the weeds on that side of the fence, they ultimately end up creeping in. Now, God instituted the family and the church and also civil government. And, uh, you know, you have this idea that, well, there's a fence there. And so whatever happens in civil government isn't going to encroach. But we find that that's not true at all. We see that the enemy has totally encroached right in the home. And so what is, what is the answer to all of this? Well, I think it's really important for us to do some real soul searching. I believe that John the Baptist did some soul searching. That this was an individual that, yes, he was called for a particular purpose. But he got to the point where sin was repulsive to him. And he realized that if that was left unchecked and unanswered for, then it's going to creep right into society. 
These are hard questions. These are things that cause us to think long and hard about this. Even myself, I've had to think about these things and really figure this out. And we kind of are in a world where we'd like to Google it and get the answer. But this is really a navigating these steps. But you might say, but look what John the Baptist did and he lost his life. Well, later on we see that uh, the Pharisees warned Jesus about Herod. And uh, he calls him an old fox. And then in that same passage, he says that uh, he's going he's gonna to die. And so what we may consider defeat in the scheme of God's plan may not be defeat at all. So we need to not let uh, kind of the movements of this world shape us, but we need to let the Word of God shape us. And that happens not only by reading it, but reading it with the intent of how do I apply this in my life? How does it shape and change my heart? And how is my heart broken for the world? I don't have the intent to tell the world they're wrong. I have the intent to share the truth of Jesus Christ. This video doesn't answer all the questions. It's not intended to answer all the questions. It's intended for you to go on a journey to do some soul searching to find out how would God have me to respond in such a time as this. May God bless you on your journey. Thank you so much.